Let us pray. Sovereign one, we gather in your ever renewing kingdom, guide us with your presence and enfold us in your love. Amen. Sheep bite. Sheep become agitated. And while they may be easier than most animals to domesticate, the image of the sheep as this docile, gentle, and easily led creature may cause us to underestimate the hard work required of the shepherd. And that imagery we often associate with the landscape of shepherds, that of this pastoral and neatly manicured landscape free of intrusion, it's kind of fantasy. In reality, the terrain is rough and there's predatory animals in very close proximity. So the role of the shepherd is not as easy as it's portrayed. It requires vigilance and involvement and awareness. It involves watching for the signs of disturbance and keeping constant count to be sure all are safe and that all is well. The metaphor of the shepherd over other leadership imagery is often applied to that of pastor with the people and of Jesus with his disciples, with the people and the disciples assuming the characteristics of the sheep, no offense. And often it's, it's imaged that the shepherd leads and the sheep passively follow, but that's not reality. In reality, sheep wander and stop and they're preyed upon by outsiders. In reality, the sheep get in their own power matches with each other and they bite, and you probably don't bite, but sheep do. And it's, they're not always those docile and peaceful creatures we imagine. And the shepherds, if doing their job in relationship with this herd, will not stand out in front where they walk with their backs to the herd. No, no, no. The shepherd must walk behind the sheep, constantly surveying and assessing who's wandering, who's slowing down, who's impaired, who needs more guidance. As the leader out in front, they'd miss all that, and then they'll lose some of their flock. And you probably know that I'm no longer talking about sheep, right? <laughs> if we remember how Jesus walked with his followers, he was among them, with them, not ahead of them. He said, follow me. But what that really meant is walk with me, not behind me. It meant do what I do, imitate me. Then he sent them out ahead of him, trusting they could manage on their own. Because in all that, he really knew them. Jesus' flock evolved to this group of engaged and self-determined individuals who modeled their shepherd and carried the message forward. Jeremiah's prophecies have to do with false leaders, false prophets of Judah. Jeremiah understood that the primary purpose of the monarchy was to do justice, to do good, to care for the people. And Jeremiah was clear that the kings and the prophets of his day were not good kings and prophets. They weren't fulfilling that purpose. They were serving themselves. They were letting their people wander away from God. And they weren't concerned about the wanderers. As long as the ones that fell in step behind them were loyal and faithful, the wanderers can fend for themselves. Jeremiah was describing the effects of this menacing shepherd or a self-serving leader who can do damage as much, if not more, than an absent leader or a negligent one. When sheep are led in the wrong direction, is it any different than when they wander on their own into dangerous places? What if the ones called to protect are the ones causing harm? I'm sure as I'm talking, many are applying these metaphors to divisive effects of our current political leadership or the divisive effects of some Christian faith traditions. The shepherds or leaders of our time are walking out in front and not paying attention to the needs and concerns of the flock. 
they are inciting. They are looking only at how many followers they have, how th they are self-serving, looking only towards the next election or the number of people sitting in their pews. They're looking at their job security. That's the dangerous leader that Jeremiah was portraying. They cause harm. In my seminary peer group, which was comprised mostly of folks pursuing pastoral care or chaplaincy, there were a few who were focusing on the ministry specifically of helping those who had been harmed by faith, who had been harmed by their church. And if you can imagine that there's this huge need in our time of that kind of pastoral care, that there are that many people being harmed by church leadership, makes me sad. But Jeremiah's text offers hope. Raising up new leaders who will, who will not lead based on their own inclinations and ideas of privilege, he alludes to a new day when God will send a king from the Davidic branch who will be just and righteous. Christians have long interpreted this text as the prophecy of Jesus from the line of David. We need to be careful about falling exclusively on that interpretation because Jeremiah is just too rich and full to be reduced just to that. But for today, for this reign of Christ day, our end of the church year and the week before Advent, let us acknowledge that tradition from which the idea of the Messiah comes, that we see in Jesus the fulfillment of hope, and thus the reign of Christ can be celebrated. Some of you might be wondering, how does that selection from Luke's gospel about the passion story have any significance in this celebrating hope that is found in the reign of Christ? Some of you might have figured it out. So let's look at that particular part we read. We focus on this one moment in the midst of the suffering and abuse, which can be described with this metaphor of struggle between light and darkness. In this moment, there's this glimpse of light, a preview of sorts, of the light that's going to shine through. We all expect forgiveness from Jesus but we minimize the significance of Jesus saying these words as he's being nailed to the cross. Father, forgive them for they don't have a clue. In the midst of the suffering, he was seeing us, still caring for us, still offering us a way home, even when we are clueless, selfish, and broken. But in our world, we often disengage from those who don't have a clue who are not in right relationship, when we encounter people who are disruptive or broken or divergent? Do we see it as our responsibility to care or do we distance ourselves, erring on the side of self-protection? When someone lash lashes out, do we ask, are you okay? Or do we take two steps back? Do we hope that all the bad folks are removed from society? Or do we work towards justice, finding a way forward towards salvation and redemption? Do we have a role to play in the caring for folks who have been harmed by the bad shepherds? It's a ponderable, right? But on the cross, in his final moments, Jesus engaged with the thief. He forgave, and he said, today you will be with me. Luke's telling of this passion story includes this scene other gospels don't share. This message of hope, just hang in there. As soon as we get through this messy bit of unpleasantness, we're going to get to the good stuff. And you will be with me, my friend. And the immediacy, today, puts an emphasis on the present, on the here and now, Engage with me in this moment of suffering, and then join me in the moment of glory. Jesus offered hope and a partnership in the suffering. The thief exemplifies coming into right relationship with God. It's never too late. And it's not just something we do once, 
but over and over again. And Jesus responds with hope and assurance that the relationship with him matters. There may be suffering, but hang in there. But wait, there's more. One more liter literary element to highlight that might bring all this together. Jeremiah mentioned the David Davidic line, the lineage of Jesus. Did you know that David started out as a shepherd? Comes full circle here. He was trained in early in gathering sheep. He protected them, moved them to the grazing fields, found them water, chased the ones who went astray. The gathering is what a good shepherd does, keeping them in relationship with each other, staying in relationship with them. And here again, we're not just talking about sheep anymore, right? Jeremiah's text speaks of the one who is coming, who will be about justice and righteousness, the shepherd that will be with the people, about the people, not above, not in front of. Luke's text reminds us that Jesus, even when suffering, was still seeing to bring others, seeking to bring others close, was still engaging and bringing others into relationship with God, offering hope. On this Reign of Christ Sunday, let us as a community work toward right relationship with God. Consider today our New Year's Eve and a time to make New Year's resolutions for doing better. And as a community, how can we be in right relationship with each other? Being present, being aware, being involved, being remembered. This Sunday, we celebrate our allegiance to Christ, to the one true God, to the Holy Spirit who unites us as a people. This Sunday, we celebrate the vibrancy and life of this church as we enter the new year with hope, with anticipation, with gladness, and with thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. Amen.